That's not on the question at the moment, <laughs> yeah. alright? If I believe I'm right, I will stick to my opinions even though many others disagree. True. Yeah. Sometimes. Orange. Blank. <laughs> That's just another thing of being bold. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> it can be a problem, alright? Yeah. That can be one of the tiger things instead of tiggers. So tiggers are bouncy About individuals who will help others. Tigers, I've got an opinion and I'm sticking to it, even others disagree. And what I would like is, in the long run, you investigate your own opinion. Too. But with many others, if it's about my course and heaps of people disagree, but they're not experts? quite like you, they're yeah. not experts, I don't care. But if you care... Said something. Ah, but you're seeing it from a, a wise point of view there, so you can have half an orange. See, I'm happy, <laughs> half an I'm happy to give you a half an orange. And um, the thing is, the reason I'm giving you that, and I'd probably be close to you more, but I've probably been a bit lenient on another one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and isn't this the world? I'm not black and white. You yeah. might notice the world isn't black and white, but you're now starting to go, oh, when I said that, I was thinking that way. Yeah. And I'm going, that's actually a very smart thought. All right? It's actually a very smart thought. And in fact, Isaacs can be a dangerous thought for people who go, oh, I, you know, like, of course the world is flat, or there is no such thing as climate change. I'm sticking to it even though all the... Oh. And so, again, that is a leadership thing about sticking to your opinion. But what you're doing is a better leadership thing in the long run of going, yeah, and it's not saying Isaac wouldn't say the same thing. Yeah. It's all of this. But most people, by the way, don't understand expertise <laughs> and they don't do any homework. So they just have that opinion. Next one. Most mistakes don't worry me. Uh, I said sometimes. I said false. Okay, so blank and yellow. And Isaac knows that's a yellow now. See? Yeah, we're all just changing my answers from now on. Yeah, oranges. But actually, that's the whole thing, Isaac. This is a very easy thing to start going. Okay, I've tried my hardest. See, if most mistakes or Isaac trying his hardest didn't bother him, I'd be going, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But if things bother you, and you, even if you're trying your hardest, it's actually eating into your own self-confidence yeah and so that's why it's actually a case of going well all right did Wait, i try did, did i do that he false. said true a uh, false sorry false. that they're worrying and again as a mate then if he makes a mistake you go who goes yeah go again yeah go again and in fact you know like in the long run this will determine a lot of um taking a chance because taking a chance is actually going what if it's a mistake and you'll go yeah but it's okay i'll recover from it and I'll go the same thing, and in the long run, you'll be like that too. But you've got to go back to this one excuse, two new plans, and to be big and strong, mm -hmm. you're going to accept there are going to be mistakes in your life, and try not to hurt other people. That's the yeah. thing. The only time I get annoyed at myself is if I do something that I think is wrong that's actually impacted on someone else. You know, yeah. like, and this would be, as I said to someone, one of my really nice young guys had a car accident, you know, and he was learning, and he had a car accident, and I said, "Did you mean to?" And he goes. Oh no, it was, a, he hit a cycle, and he didn't see, he, he got caught in there. And I said, he goes, I didn't see, and when I, he said it was the world's worst thing. And I'm going, again, it is, but is the guy all right? Yeah, the guy was fine. And I'm like, so you're going to make retribution with helping him with his bike, make sure yeah. all of that's there. And I said, and know that it was not on purpose. Because if you don't forgive yourself, <laughs> it still doesn't help the bloke. Yeah. And it's certainly not helping how you're going to be next time you're doing something. So all of this is really important together. All right, next one. I'm a loner. <laughs> False, sometimes. You call yourself, uh, okay. Orange. There is a difference between being alone, liking being alone, and being a loner. True. Yeah. All right. That's well, I didn't say you're a loner. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> what I would say with Isaac, but it's interesting when he said that. Um, and again, can we go back to the profile of the guys from Bowling with Columbine? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Now? I get angry quickly. I hold on to anger. I'm a loner. Yeah. I don't have many friends. Mm -hmm. All of that. Now you're starting to see the profile of people. Um, so, you know, if people like being alone, that's fine. But there's a difference between calling yourself a loner. And that's why, again, when you think about it or how you define yeah. it, is a worthwhile thing to talk to people about because yeah. some people go, oh no, I like having some time alone. I'm like, that's quite different 
to actually going it's good for humans to like having a little bit of time you know of doing whatever you're doing and it might be building something doing our jigsaws or whatever we're doing but if you put people who are, are loners with angry upset and everything we are giving a real problem with our young people if they're like that and we yeah. haven't helped all right next one i don't always follow the group i said sometimes i said true oh shit um i mean sorry it says always so can i change my answer? yes you can and this is what <laughs> i'm talking about this, <laughs> certainly can. this is what i'm talking about and this is this thing when it's wrong when you're just pushing buttons because if you push a wrong answer or a different answer twice, it can take down levels of how your boldness is or how your colourfulness is. And that's why I sit here and go, I don't care where you are. I care what you're learning so that you can actually go, and you're exactly right, you both should be true. Yeah. It should be orange. And that's uh, that language is written in there sometimes intentionally, Isaac. Yeah. You know, because like, it's actually... Yeah, I get you. I have random conversations with people I don't know. True. True. False. All the time. Ah, so there's your orange, and there's his, one of the things he's going to have to add to his repertoire. Yeah. Why? Why doesn't Isaac have as many random conversations? Because I'm just so cool. Why does Isaac <laughs> like <laughs> karaoke but not random ah, conversations? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Really. See, this also involves what are you going to talk to someone about? You and I will just go, how's your day? What yeah. about this? We will pick up on something quickly that you could talk to someone about or um, all of that. That just takes practice. Now, this is where um, even, you know, like in our family, um, Ellen's pretty good at going and having random conversations because I go and have random conversations. And this is probably one of the things that, because Isaac, number in the family and everything, hasn't done as much of. And it's one of the things I would actually say to him now, I want him to practice. Mm. The going up and saying, hi, how's your day? Um, you know, like, and trying to pick something to have a conversation with people. So I had a guy who was a really good bloke, but he was a barista. And he stood at the back and didn't talk to the people. And so one of his homework things was, <laughs> when he made the coffee, he had to go out and, uh, you know, say two things to the people he was serving. Mm. Because often the people you're serving don't say anything back. And it's like... Well, if you can learn to have these conversations, all it is, Isaac, is actually getting you used to putting yourself out there. All right? So it's not... And again, some of these are not right or wrong. They are just giving you hints of, ah, oh, that's a bold one. Yeah. And this whole thing is... The funniest thing I used to do when I was a PE teacher and getting kids to do things before I even knew about psychology was um, the weirdest things you can do is if there's one person on the bus go and sit next to them. <laughs> You want to know about how people think, you know, yeah. like that. Or lifts, turning the other way <laughs> when oh, you get into a lift. Because <laughs> we as human beings are used to everything being, you know, like, oh, you spread out when you're doing this and all of this. And it interrupts all of our, how we see yeah. the world with all of this. And again, these are little funny things to look at. But one of the biggest things, Isaac, and both of you is... Probably, Josh, you observe a lot of human nature a little bit. and Also, you've lived a life that you have to talk about going out with a lot of people, while Isaac's probably not had anywhere near as many different experiences. So that creates that. And that's where, at the moment, you're practicing one thing, Isaac's practicing now, ha, oh, random conversations. <laughs> you know, like, so it means when you have, you know, like the bloke that came up to us this morning. Um, oh, at, yeah. And Isaac, how do you know him? Well, we just see him and then he starts talking and we talk back. And you end up having random conversations with people. And you know a lot about people. And that, that's part of care, too. All right, next one. I have an interesting mind. True. True, true. Yeah. Both of you, orange. Uh, again, who cares? It's <laughs> nice that you think you've got an interesting yeah, mind. Does I'm, that make sense? Yeah. yeah. See, this is the thing is, people will actually go, oh, no, I'm terrible. Do people right. actually not say they have an interesting mind? Yes. That's amazing. Most people would say they and don't. They don't portray that's, themselves that's, as boring. That, that's yeah, well, they actually see that no, or intellectually not that smart. Yeah. And that's a really sad thing, you know, because your mind should be interesting. It doesn't matter whether you're good at maths or science. And this is why, you know, part of the homework for people who say they don't have an interesting mind is to do some different things, to try something. Yeah. You know, try a hobby you haven't, or even going and watching stupid Marvel movies. Because you start to see imagination. Mm -hmm. You start to see how the world of superheroes looks exactly cold, colourful, bold, all mm -hmm. of that. 
Superheroes are made up in science fiction on what is often very, very good science, brain science. So the Hulk at the moment, talk to me about him. The Hulk. He's big and green. Yeah, he's big and green. And when he's big and green, he's angry, yeah. which isn't a good thing. And he does dumb things. He's only useful as a tool instead of other things. Yeah. But he's starting to try and be so he can think more. But if you think of the latest Marvel, spoilers here, if you haven't seen it, then you're watching this. <laughs> <it's been laughs> um, but if you actually go, the Hulk, he got scared by Thanos in the last one. Yeah. And he can't come out. He's scared. See, and fear stops performance in everything. Yeah. Fear is another thing. So, again, I like asking people who tell me they haven't got an interesting mind to start being interested in things that maybe they've never seen before. Oh, Jenny, I don't watch that. Well, yeah, yeah but let's start going, start baby steps. Here's a good one. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy, if you're listening, is a good one to start on because it's got a good soundtrack, which makes you, music, <laughs> makes you go with, oh, this is actually more fun than even maybe you'd have normally. Get that ad we <laughs> <laughs> think we should be to do that. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. So if you're looking for expertise in the other areas, come back when the boys interview me on the other side. <laughs> How do you do social media, Jed? Oh, well, I try really hard, <laughs> and I take myself off and pull good-looking blokes on instead. Wow. Yes, I'm smart. I'm smart. Okay, the next one. <laughs> no, um, I get the orange. <laughs> most of my coaches would give me an A for effort. I said true. Orange. That's really important because that's what you're talking about. There's effort. So stop worrying about making mistakes. If your coaches are going to give you an A for effort, that means you're actually doing pretty well. And um, notice, by the way, that said most. Yeah. That's because true. these are my questions. A lot of these now yeah. starting to come in, which are questions that go with sport, all right, yeah. or performance. Yeah. And that one is... Not all your coaches or all your teachers would necessarily give you an A for effort. And often it's because they're terrible. Yeah. And people who've got personality dealing with terrible people actually have a lot of trouble with it. Mm. Because you can't sit back and just go, oh yeah, I'm going to accept all of this and not do silly things or make it more fun, which often they don't like. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. I have told people what to do on the field in a forceful manner. False. I said false. But Josh has probably never had the opportunity. So yeah, there's a normal. possibility if you're talking about that. Okay, now, that doesn't matter. That would be a yellow if you're a captain. Yeah. All right? Now, that is really important that you will say things in a forceful manner. So, again, I have captains go, no worries with that. Yeah, I tell them all the time. And I go, so tell me about off the field. Well, what do you mean? And I'm like, it's like anything else. If I actually say, Josh, get over and do that now on a field, you'll just do that because you'll go... Jenny likes me, she talks to me normally, she knows about my life, she yeah. cares about me, and I haven't had time to go, how's your day, Josh? Do you think you could go over there? So <laughs> when I was just playing touch uh, footy with Mark, I pushed him <laughs> over to cover the yeah. edge. And I'm like, hurry up, move! And I've just pushed him. And, and, and then I'm going, good job, good job. And then after the game, I go, you did really well. And he goes, you pushed me. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but you needed to move fast. And it was funny because we talked about it then, and I always make my teams talk about this now, is that you need to care, you need to understand each other, you need to actually understand a lot about each other's lives. On game day, the result counts, which means your feedback is going to be direct, not personal, like, Josh, you bloody idiot, you know, what are you doing, you moron? Mm -hmm. Because that's what they do too. That is never acceptable. doesn't make anyone better. But you can say, Josh, get closer on your player. And if Josh isn't doing that, or you can't do that, or Isaac isn't doing it, my job as a captain is to get you better at it. Yeah. All right? To either help you then and there, or at the next training, to help you get better. And if you do get close to your plan and doing, my next thing is to say, good job, good job, well done, well done. Hit you in the backside a couple of times. Um, you know, like, but this is really important, because these people think it's great that you've done it in a forceful manner. Yeah, I need you to be a captain and say things sometimes. Yeah. But it's actually, and if you think about it, good parenting is the same thing. It's actually, sometimes with kids, I've been, no! But a kid's gone to run across the road and they've yeah. stopped completely. And someone goes, oh, and I'm like, I don't yell very much. I don't raise my voice or do that. But this forceful is something that can make people do things quickly yeah. and get it done. But it's within an atmosphere of care where everyone knows what it is and it's never personally nasty. Yeah. So that's why that question is there. It doesn't matter to you two at the moment yeah. because you're not a captain. But if you were going to become a captain, 
That is incredibly important, that question. All right? So it's nothing wrong with actually saying yes, no. And to me, it's a lot like how you train your dog. All right? You do need to actually go, sit. Yeah. Oh, sit. Yeah. Oh, please sit. Please sit. Because Isaac will tell you, I definitely won't do that if you say, please sit, please sit. So again, there. So this is about being kind, but also learning how to do it properly on a field. Yeah. All right? So both of you can leave that blank. Yeah. But you now know that that needs to be a true, but under the thing of yeah. care. Yeah. All right? Next one. Um, people... Ooh, you go. I a lot. <laughs> people think my mind goes at a million miles an hour. I said true. I said sometimes. Orange, blank, but getting there. Half a, half an orange, because sometimes yeah. half an orange. So again, all that is, is that's imagination. And it's interesting, what would you say about Josh there? Um, sometimes? Yeah, in certain, yeah, in certain so, times. Okay. <laughs> so that's the sometimes. I would say true about you, and people will definitely say that's true yeah. about me. So that's another imagination and colour, all right? Yeah. People who are high in that, when we do things, the worst thing I'm called is kooky. <laughs> Tell you have some kooky ideas? Yeah, well, guess what? That's where the best... You've got to have ideas, all right? Yeah. So this is actually good to actually go when people do that. And if people don't, I want them to have an idea on this. You know, I, oh, think about that. What would you say? And you know how I always talk about connecting situations? So what we're doing today is connecting a situation where you're actually going, look, I'm really good at this, but maybe I don't know much about this. Yeah. It's actually, this is my job is to teach people not to actually go, oh, look, I'm, I'm the psych and I know everything and I'll just grade you. I'm actually giving you reasons why. Mm -hmm. Next one. Um, friends would say I am ultra competitive when something is important to me. True, true. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. That's what you said. Orange. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Orange. <laughs> and that again is drive. So when something's important to you, if you're not competitive, someone will beat you. All right? Yeah. So that's what... The answer is when people talk about... It's interesting because this is part of toxic masculinity. When they talk about that men who are toxic are highly competitive. And I'm going, but that's not true. Because highly competitive... You know, to, to be a champion sportswoman, I need to be highly competitive. Yeah. Mm. What happens is we need to know when to turn it on, when to turn it off, and not to be angry. Mm -hmm. to stay within the thinking zone, mm. all right? It only becomes toxic when I'm so competitive that I go over the top that I become angry that my whole world just becomes bitter and violent, all right? So this is why I have trouble with all these labels of men or women where, in fact, every one of these is on a continuum. And where we fit on that continuum is where we need to turn it down or be up. Yep. All right, next one. You good. In fashion or in public, I don't mind if I stand out as different. True, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Uh, orange for true, and either you can have half an orange. But again, why? When we're talking about embarrassment, this is one of those things that Isaac can wow. practice. Mm. All right. He wore a pink shirt for one. Yeah. I, I love that. that. But, yeah. but you see, I love that. Any yeah, winter one. <laughs> but he looks great in things like that. Yeah. But again, this is also we're in different colours going this. And Isaac will tell me, his dad will say to me, sometimes I'll wear something and I'll go, I wouldn't go crabbing in that. And I'm like, I choose to be different. I choose to not be like everyone else. You don't have to be like that all the time. But you've got to actually go that if, if mistakes or being embarrassed is one thing that we need to improve on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one I need to know. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I have stayed sober when others got drunk. True. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so Isaac doesn't drink. Me either. <laughs> Josh doesn't drink. In. Hey, I want to do an advertisement for amazing young men who don't drink. Yeah. Because this is one of the big things in um, when I did Sacred Heart and I had a whole class and I asked a class, I would have had a third of the kids didn't drink. Yeah. A third really way over drank, but a third didn't drink. And when we all started talking about it, it was amazing that most of them didn't know that a lot of the others didn't drink. Yeah. And it's almost like our society has this secret thing that if you don't drink, there's something wrong with you. And I'm going, you two just even sitting here, this is a really good ad. But the other reason that it's interesting is you guys don't suffer from anger. Or you don't suffer from too much doubt about yourself. The times people are most likely to drink to excess is to cut those thoughts out, mm. the ones that are doubting themselves. Or if you're really angry, try not to be angry because 
for a while, alcohol makes things feel better, or yeah. drugs makes things feel better. The problem is, as you keep drinking or taking drugs, at some point you go over that level and you will be angry. And if you're an angry person, mm. it will all contribute. Do you see how this starts to fit? Yeah. So again, um, often people, uh, they talk about extroverts um, often need stimulus to come into their brains. Um, introverts will often um, just want to dull down all the voices that are in their heads and that's why people often drink or take drugs to dull the voices down for a while. But then what happens is the voices start to come back as they get, and it all magnifies. Right. So it's an interesting question. And that one, by the way, if you want to be great, you want to be your own person, you have to be to say true to. You have yeah. to be, a, for all the people who come into here who do drink, we then have some things to do. First of all, if I'm working with a whole club of young men, what do you reckon we say to do? Catch up and not drink. Yeah, yeah, or even after a game, the number one thing is for the first two drinks, it's got to be um, uh, soft drinks. Yeah. Water or soft drinks for everyone. Because what that means is at least they rehydrate with non-alcoholic stuff. Yeah. So it's actually rehydrating them, which is a good thing. Secondly, I tell a lot of mine that you can have a beer or a, a thing, just have one. And, you know, walk around with it. Yeah. Walk around with it because then... It's often harder for people who drink to say no to a drink than it is non-drinkers. Because you're, if you're non-drinkers, your mates all know you're non-drinkers and yeah. stop pressuring you at some stage. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know, it's a big joke, I know, because I also don't drink. Yeah. They have people going, oh, yeah, come on, you need a drink. But at some stage, everyone just goes, yeah, that's them, they don't drink. It's for the people who normally drink a fair bit or drink, you know, who then go, nah, and if your head's not going good, I really need people not to drink or take drugs because yeah. I need to help them. All right? So I have to give them strategies where walk around with a beer all day or yeah. walk around with a Coke and just make out it's a, yeah. a whatever. Yeah. So they actually stop being hassled about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But in footy clubs, I also make it, if I go and work with a footy club, one of the, and I don't have too many rules, so let's go for guidelines. One of the guidelines is um, if someone says they're not drinking that night, no one's allowed to actually try and shout them a drink. All right, so you start to bring this in, but you can see why you can change footy clubs once they start to understand anger and they start to understand how people are feeling on here. For the first time ever, they're actually listening rather than going, oh, she's a wowser or she's just saying this. I'm giving them exact reasons why we're trying to help people and we're trying to teach angry people how to deal with it rather than actually going, oh, I'm just going to go and get drunk tonight. Mm -hmm. And then they don't go home and then they don't have problems with domestic violence. So Mm -hmm. this is why... If you guys ever get famous, you need to change how we do things because I'm not famous and so all of these other programs get it and I go, but they don't actually teach what to do about it. They just tell young men, don't be, don't do this. Yeah.